God called us, man, to be the forerunner, to be in the forefront, to really be the catalyst of change. Having these kids get to see, touch, and hear success is very important because oftentimes we take that for granted. When you've never seen it, unless it was on television, it's hard to identify with, you know what, I, I can do that. I think we ended up with 47 kids after we cut bait and we reloaded to, I think, 110. It's a lot of new faces. It's a lot of new faces. My expectation of these guys to maximize their moments and be all who they can possibly be. Empty the tank, man. Don't leave nothing. Don't leave nothing. Give it your all. Do your all. Want it all. Prepare. Focus. You got to be playing for something bigger than you because you'll quit on you. And these guys, man, they got it. This is a whole new thing. When people are talking about transformation and you're talking about blazing new trails, hey, we serious. We're blazing new trails. The only way you change the culture is to change the darn people. You can't change the culture with the same people. You can't do that. It don't make sense. It ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna work. You gotta change the people, change the mindsets, change the ideologies, change the thought process. Change the wants, the needs, the desire, the passion, the purpose. You got to change all that. And I'll be darned if I ain't going to change it. Coach Prime is presented by Chevy Silverado. The Jackson State football team went through a major facelift after the first spring season under Coach Prime. Many of the ineligible players who practiced with the Tigers in the spring can now play ball this season. Tight on me, tight on three. One, two, three. Hey, man, y'all know who it is. Big two one. Number one defense in the sweat. While a small number of key contributors from the spring season return with hopes of being starters again in the fall. Hey, man, y'all see who it is, man. Big folks. What's up, baby? With what we got right now and with what we potentially got coming, dog, it ain't going to be fair. All in all, this Jackson State football program looks different. From the spring to the fall, the growth has been tremendous, but you can't grow unless you, you cut some things back. Over 70 kids are uh, gone. For the most part, the maturity level has risen. The togetherness has risen. Um, we've become more of a family. But now it's just like we're, we're working out the kinks and we're pushing to something that we all agree on, that one goal, which is the championship. The Tigers welcomed several Power 5 transfers on both sides of the ball including wide receiver Josh Lanier from Alabama, outside linebacker James Houston from Florida, wide receiver Malachi Wideman from Tennessee, and defensive lineman Antoine Owens from Georgia Tech. The players that are here now, they came here for a reason. Everybody almost came from Power 5 school, so they know what they lost by coming here. But at the same time, they know what they're going to gain from leaving here. You know, this is something we've always been working towards, and now we have our collection of guys that we can we can take out the kennel. You know, you think about we call them dogs. So the kennel's open now, and they running they running free and they're hungry, and uh, and they're doing exactly what we thought they would do. But we are excited for our fans to see it because this is what we promised them, and I think we're going to deliver on that. Guess what, Sanders? What's that? 
Shiloh and Shador get to play That's finally. That's unbelievable, man. I mean, it must have killed everybody. I mean, it killed me just having them to be on the sidelines this last season. Uh, you know, I asked Shiloh about it. He said, Dad, it was like, it's like watching your best friend get beat up and you can't do nothing. You can't jump mm. in to help him. That, that's how he explained watching the game from the sideline. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting. We, because we brought in a class that it's got to be difference makers. They got to be game changers. You know, at Florida State, we were an average school, man. And our class came in in 85. We changed the game. Like, we changed the game to where it was an expectation that every year someone was going in the first round, one or two players. From that class, I think two of us went in the first round, me and Sammy Smith. Wow. And we changed the game. That's mm -hmm. what we're looking to do mm -hmm. here, change the darn game. We're not looking for HBCU caliber players. Mm -mm. We're, we're looking for dogs, man. We're looking for kids that can play on Sunday. Kids that you're going to remember on Monday. Right. Yeah, and kids right. that's going to cash them checks on Tuesday. That's what we're looking for, and that's what we're going to get. Descended from two historic coaching trees, Coach Prime is branching out into an environment that does not yet share the trappings of Florida State's high-end facilities or the opulence of Jerry World. Yet Prime was a catalyst for a small but vital step in bringing Jackson State closer to the bright lights of the big time, the brand new practice field. The major goal, is that we, we need a practice field, we need a practice facility, we need home. We didn't have a practice home. Every time it rained, we had to go somewhere for a darn week. It's unbelievable. The field is beautiful, state of the art, top of the line, and the kids adore it. Man, that grass field was pretty bad. Like, I can't stress how bad it was. You had potholes. Like, it probably looked like somebody went golfing on that field. So just being on turf, like, turf can withstand just about anything. And it, it looks really nice. I mean, the number one goal is obviously we want our student athletes to leave here with an experience. And, you know, that was one of the things that had to change. When you have to jump on the bus, you know, and go practice somewhere else, that's not a college experience. To have that feel, that's been beneficial, and that will be the key to our existence and to our access moving forward, because we have a field that we can call our own and practice on every day. I was at another HBCU, and I'm not saying in, uh, in other small schools. That just doesn't happen, because they're very expensive. Uh, he got a sponsor and money to get it done, because he knew our players needed it. He knew the university needed it. You know, when you win in all programs, things get done. I'm not saying we're there yet, but things happen when you win. That's one thing that when people say change, you don't understand, that's change. If we don't do another thing, that right there is change. That they can practice on every darn day that they want to. That's what change looks like. And on the Tigers practice fields, a new generation of defensive excellence is being cultivated. From Coach Prime to players like Shiloh Sanders, Dejan Nugget Warren, and Aubrey Miller. We locked in for the season, bro. Let's get it, for sure. <laughs> All right, playing with Shiloh, it's, it's really fun because we, we match each other energy. Like, we're two high energy guys. So just having a safety back there that understands me because of how close we are and how we communicate, it makes, it makes my job easy. And I can make his job easy. Like, we feed off each other. Can't let him catch any back shoulder. Play okay. underneath, bro. Okay. You gonna get in trouble for this, bro. Okay. Shiloh is a, a emotional. Everything is on the sleeves, and he don't realize you gotta calm down and see things for what they really are. Quit being so emotional. Quit talking and running your mouth and saying this and that because you don't know how stupid it sounds. We're thinking about the wholeness of the entirety of the team, and you're thinking about the individual. Hey, round the block, round the block. Hey, Shiloh. Shallow, you got to stop the devices that you got to stop with the defense that you got to stop the foolishness. They told you we're a team early on. Stupid. I don't want to hear no defense. My game, my bad. In your game. So you're going to be right back on the bench. Keep on hollering your game. You're going to see. Shallow. Shallow. Tell them do better. Shut up. I deserve to be on a team. That's all I'm saying. You are. You're on the fourth team. You're on the fourth team. You don't even have a fourth team. Exactly. You got to grow to become the guy that you want to be, and that's a leader. I don't think he wants to lead vocally, but sometimes he goes out there and tries to do it, and he says some stupid stuff. 
And you got to be inclusive. You got to bring every a leader brings everyone together. Defensive players, I feel like if you're a DB, it's no it's no reason why you wouldn't come play here. You got the best corner that ever played as your head coach, and you get you get lessons from him every day. I'm gonna tell you what, I will give you this. Y'all are bigger, stronger, and somewhat faster. Y'all want better. Y'all a byproduct. A byproduct got loins. You came out my ball, son. Hey, I know y'all gonna post that. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like that, I know you told them, keep this. Oh, oh, that's kept. <laughs> that's kept. You came out my ball. He done coached legends. I'm not and I got coached by him, so that means that I got coached with the legends. It's not, yeah. Stop it. Stop it. Aubrey Miller arrived in Jackson with a good deal of fanfare, an SEC transfer from Missouri with a high ceiling. But the linebacker spent last season closer to his floor, struggling in the classroom. 45, man, is, uh, we call him 45. We don't even call him by his name. 45 is, uh, he's a special kid. It's, it's one of those kids that when he watched the doc and saw himself, I think the lights came on and he said, wow, so this is how I look, this is how I sound, this is how I am, wow. Hey, tell him why, tell him why you telling him to shut up, please, because he don't understand. Hey, you you yeah. just telling him the damn defense. <laughs> You did it wrong, and you mad at him for telling you to shut up and get it wrong. You wrong. He he got to stop. He's yeah. getting on everybody in his nerves, dog. Because you keep playing yourself, playing yourself. Next play yourself, it's gonna be off the field. Shut up. Do your job. The spring was more of a mental state of mind. I feel like, you know, as far as body language and attitude wise, and you know, just always being worried about something. I was thinking too much in the spring. It was like a. It was stressful. It was more so like a counseling session every day, talking to him, keeping him grounded. Off the field, he's always been the same. He's been very focused. I think the only thing that's changed for him, again, is his maturity mentally. He's not in his head as much as he used to be. He digressed and took all the teachings and uh, guidance from Coach Hart, who's doing a phenomenal job with him, not just on the field, but off the field as a man. I was just sitting here as soon as I turned around, that was another thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So once you sit there on him, go and put your hands on him. Good. That way you can feel him. If he moves, then you know you got to move. Okay. If he stay there, then you good. You can start searching your eyes. Okay. Move your feet. Move your feet. Move your feet. Go, Chase. Go, Chase. Hey. Oh, we're just getting, getting another day in the work, man. It's always work, work, work. Lifting, getting bigger, getting ready for the game. Get prepared. Um, I have a lot of experience. I'm way more disciplined, way more knowledge of the game. The speed guy, and I got used to that stuff. So, you know, there's more determination to it. I like 45. He's emerging. I know we've been on him hard, but from the spring to now, he's doing a lot better as far as his play. Because the thing about 45 is he's got to come out there and hit you. Aubrey Miller will come out there and lay the hat. And people that can lay the hat, I mean, they become leaders real quick. You know, as a coach, you're always proud of your players, but when the academics come into it, because you are a student athlete, that's the biggest thing. Help me understand. Oliver Miller, help me understand. Four Fs, man? Where you going with that? You ain't getting a degree. All I need was the opportunity to be able to make up my work, met the right people, and uh, those, those right people opened up a lot of doors for me to be able to make up my work and end up making honor roll. He called me, Dad, man, man, honor roll got the D's list. I said, man, no, you didn't. No, for real, I'm gonna show them to you in a minute. I mean, I'm proud of him. Um, I saw the stress part, him standing up, trying to get these assignments in. For me, baby, making my work, it was kind of like a, uh, I told you so. Slowly but surely, he's starting to come around. He's starting to come around that mountain. But that guy wants to win. We do know that he wants to win. But while the defense is looking dialed in through the leadership and example of Sanders, Warren, and Miller, the offense is still trying to find its groove, with the offensive line in particular stuck in second gear. The offensive line is, is, is with every team, is going to be one of the toughest groups because it's no one that plays football from the start that says, hey, I want to go out here and block somebody. That's not the job. That's not the thing that you want to do. You want the ball, or you want to tackle somebody with the ball, or you want to throw the ball, you want to catch the ball. You don't naturally want to block somebody. That, that's just not natural. 
So many attributes that comprise a really good offensive lineman. And when one of them ain't in sync, man, it's going to be a problem. What can listen? Let's go. Hey, work, man. Work. Are your butt's going to be right back over there. Work, man. The ball go that way. I want to see y'all downfield. Work, man. Hey, guys. I don't know if y'all know it or not, but our offensive line is the weakest unit that we have. Because we saw. That's why we throwing during every down. Because we saw. Let's get here, do what we got to do, and we gonna just run. We gonna get in shape or something. Hey, Lion, do y'all even care, man? Y'all ain't getting nothing. Y'all ain't blocking nobody. That's the problem, you know what I'm saying, as a group. So we had to fix everything we had to fix, and which is, it's us. We had to fix the team getting together, you know, going over plays, if that's the case. We just had to figure out things that we had to do better. My coaching style, I think coaching offensive line, you got to be a great teacher. All of us have to be great teachers. And the next part of it is to motivate them to be that guy that they need to be for us. And that you take personal responsibility for that, because if they're not playing at a level you want, that's on you. Everybody up, everybody up. Coaches, are y'all blind? Can y'all not see what's going on out here? Can y'all not see coaches? I'm talking to y'all. Can y'all not see what's going on? Yes, yes, yes. You know what? Because we can't handle adversity. We go. can't handle the sun. We can't handle it. We think you're just going to walk out there and whoop ass. You're wrong. Hard work beats talent. When talent doesn't work hard, and our talent doesn't bust their ass because you take the easy way. Take the easy way. I pointed it anyway. You take it. You take it, you take it, you take it, you take it. You don't bust your ass when the head goes down your wrong. And then you talk back to the guy that gives you a scholarship. Be a man. Are you a man? Are you a man? Are you a man? A real man? Coach, I've always had the best line, the best group. It's an embarrassment. You know, some guys, they're just not built to be that guy. And you take the other person that's a little bit nasty and He'll run into somebody 70 times a game. He doesn't care. He wants that. That's something you got to kind of, I hate to say it, you got to beat it in them. You got to stay on them constantly about being that. Everybody in here? Everybody in here? There's one element as we start off in this, guys. They know inside run. This is one of the toughest drills in football for an offensive line, and we're going to do it a lot more because we are not good and consistent in the run game. Second, Coach, we got a couple people who's going to say a few things because this we, we can't take it no more. Y'all got to get this shit together, man. All this bickering and bitching is bitch ass. When we built this shit, we wanted to win. And the shit y'all doing ain't fucking winning. That's whole shit. Who's that, you may ask? It's Pretty Tony. Pretty Tony has been Coach Prime's right-hand man for almost 15 years. And if you see Coach Prime on campus, there's a good chance that Pretty Tony is close by. Pretty Tony always has our best interests at heart. And he had so much built up in him, and uh, he just let him have it. We can't win with y'all being bitches. You shouldn't say what he said. You shouldn't say what he said. You should say, man, cut that shit out. Man, cut that shit out. We trying to win. I don't give a fuck if you don't like the next person beside you, but you motherfuckers got to work together. Coach want me to build a championship team. This ain't it right here with two motherfuckers in here. We got to cut this shit out because ain't nothing fucking throwing shit on tape. Ain't no pro in this motherfucking room. Y'all got to fix this shit because we can't win like this, fella. Fam, you going to kick y'all ass. Y'all talk that shit and look good. Nobody want to chase a bag. That's all I got to say. Don't be no bitch. That's the, that's the title of this, man. Don't be a bitch. Now you see why pretty tony is what they call it the next major test in coach prime's quest to raise the tigers to the levels he envisions and at which he competed begins with preparations for the trip to miami where jackson state will square off against florida a and m packed for first game in miami it took a long time to get here but at the same time it came fast no what did they say we got a packed up jeans Short tees, polos. Got to pack some underwear, though. That's a must. You know how I make packing easier? I just call my dad. Hey. Up, hey, don't say nothing crazy, man. I'm filming right now. I got to ask you something. I'm packing. What do I need to pack? Um, Your suit. One. I mean, I'm wearing my suit. What you wearing on the plane? Do you care what shoes, though? No. 
You never disappointed me with your shooting game, man. And Jake, bring some jeans. We may go to dinner one night. Like a good old day. All right. I got you. I feel like getting on the plane and getting off the plane with that suit, it's going to feel like a movie because, like, i never done that before. These Versace's right here. I'm going to wear these with the suit for sure, though. Hey, this is so funny right here. <laughs> Why that hate to put this in? <laughs> Finally done. Now it's time. Get on the plane and go handle business. All right, JJ, we've got... Went to the mall, the Mississippi outlets, and it's almost like Christmas. Football's no problem for him. As far as showing up, doing everything right, he's going to lift, he's going to do everything. School, another thing. So it took us a little bit to get the transcripts in because he went to three high schools. He's approved to go to Miami. So we went out and did some shopping. I look out, and he brings this out. So as soon as, as, soon as he brought this out and I saw it, Immediately, I thought Miami Vice. I mean, just him being here is so phenomenal. I mean, it was really cool. Of course, you know, we got we got canned in Buffalo, which that happens. The NFL really stands for not not for long. But the, the, the silver lining of that, or the thing that I guess stuck out was, you know what? I can go home, and now I can coach my kids' high school teams. Not many kids get to play college football with their parents, going to Florida first game freshman year. This means a lot. I mean, this means everything to me. What else you got? Go get, go get all your underwear and stuff. To me, it's a business trip because if you don't get it, if you don't get the W, it's not worth a trip to me. Got to have Jimmy Buffett shoes, all right? Even though he's born in the great state of Mississippi, Biloxi. There you go, the palm tree. We're pretty much ready to go, guys. Ready to get this W? Let's go. Let's go win. Say, bro, you stole my sleeves? All right, still nothing for you. Come in here, what's up? Bro, what is this then? Bro, that's mine. Did you wash your sleeves? No. Bro, what you packing, bro? Why you got all this stuff, bro? Uh, drip. <laughs> drip. <laughs> bro, you wouldn't even need that many outfits. You gonna wear probably bad. one outfit out of that bag, bro. Don't come with me asking for clothes. You ain't, <laughs> you ain't packing up. Don't come up in my room when I'm packing. <laughs> First of all, when you look good, you feel good. So you know we're gonna be feeling good. And on a business trip, ain't nothing more, nothing less to it. It's a business trip. It's time to pack. Okay, I got my tights, my outfit. I don't know what shoes to wear with my suit. I, I was gonna wear my Gucci's. I was gonna wear my McQueen's. I mean, what colors to go with the uh, suit? Put on your Gucci's. Hey, why would you wear black and white when your suit blue? Because I didn't want to feel like I was doing too much with the colors, though. Well, then go wear some K Swiss. Dude, I'm not finna put on no K Swiss. <laughs> okay, so I wear the Gucci's. I gotta finish packing though. I'm gonna call you, love you. We expecting fam, you best though. We ain't going in this game thing and they just gonna lay down at all, cause if they not, we're gonna get everybody best, so, so we gotta take care of business like we're supposed to. Otherwise, ain't no otherwise. I ain't even gonna talk about the otherwise, cause ain't no otherwise. Do you trust me? Because we about to embark on something that's special. Something that's real, something that has an expectation. Because now I'm starting to see that you guys don't trust each other like you think you do. Because some people are getting on others' nerves in here, and y'all tired of it. Am I right or wrong? Because you, you're starting to understand, hey, man, this dude ain't with us. He ain't riding for us. He ain't down with us. We're trying to win. We're trying to win it all. We have an expectation. I know some of y'all don't have an expectation in yourself because it's been such a long time since you really excel and you really ball. But we have an expectation of dominance. We have an expectation that we gonna go to the next level. We have an expectation that we gonna win. I have an expectation that I want you to go pro. I'm sitting on interviews all their day talking about y'all. Talking about y'all, talking about the expectation, talking about what we are capable of doing. But some of y'all gotta really get serious and focused because that draft is gonna come and go. And you have no plan for life. You have no plan for life. You have nothing. If football don't work out, what you gonna do? What's the plan, fellas? I'll do my seat, my truck driving license. Okay. You're gonna get your truck driving license like that. That's a lot of driving. I like the road. That's it. See, it's good because it's an option right now. But when it's a reality and you have to do that, when you have to make those drives, when you have to meet a demand on time, when you have to be there at this location, when storm and hail and sleet and snow is coming and you got to be there. It ain't no, oh, my bad. Ain't none of that. Because what they do, they take your keys, they take all of that, and they say, we ain't, we're, done, we're done with you. Now you got to go get a hustle on somewhere else. Now what's the plan again? 
Because if you can't do this and that you love at 100%, how are you going to do that in something you like? I've got time today. Because I'm not going to Miami for nothing. And I'm not putting nobody on that plane that ain't got everything in it. Coach, I know y'all picked 60, but we ain't taking 60. We taking how many that want to go? Not this bull jump. Everybody just want to be a part of it. They want to put on the uniform. They want to stunt. We're taking everybody that's going to get on that plane to ball. Nobody else. Is that understood? Let's roll. Ball, ball, all of my dog, ball to the death. Yeah, I'm winning it all, money to power and the respect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, run me my check, yeah. Ooh, I'm one of the best. Uh, yeah, running it up, come in correct or I come at your neck. Yeah, ooh, ball, ball, all of my dog, ball to the death. Yeah, I'm winning it all, money to power and the respect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, run me my check, yeah. Ooh, I'm one of the best. Uh, yeah, running it up, come in correct or I come at your neck. Yeah. For decades, college football players had to wait until the end of the season for a bowl game atmosphere. But the Tigers get to kick off their season with the Orange Blossom Classic, a historic game that returns after a 43-year hiatus. You see where we are, man? You see the hotel, you see the accommodation? You know, when they have those little mats that they roll in front of your shower, that, that you somewhere. But this can actually be our normalcy. I expect this, man. I expect this for y'all. I want y'all to expect this, but how you maintain this? You kick butt. And then when it becomes a habit, it becomes a lifestyle. When it comes a lifestyle, you can't get used to the lifestyle because you got to just find another goal, another level to reach. Guys, we're on a business trip. Let's keep the main thing the main thing. I'm going to reiterate this. Don't allow a moment of pleasure or satisfaction to cause you to lose a lifetime of hope. And you reflect on this moment and say, dang, if I was just left alone, just saying, got my butt on time, I'd have been there. Now you got to get sent home because we're going to put you on the Greyhound. You're going to be on that dog. You know, if anybody on, 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 rode on that dog, Greyhound, that's what we call a dog back in the day. You're going to stop in every city before you get there. But guys, this is a heck of a moment. Take advantage of it. You see where we are. I want y'all to get used to this, but let's take care of this week. All right? It's important to have this type of exposure because uh, God called us, man, to really be the catalyst of change. For us to be in a game of this magnitude in my first big HBCU classic, having it back in my home state, playing against a, a school that was right across the street from us in Florida State, FAMU, and a dear friend coach and Coach Willie Simmons, it was epic. Yeah, having this game, the Orange Blossom Classic, uh, national televised on ESPN2, I think does wonders for both respective institutions. Um, you're talking about two blue blood programs uh, in the landscape of not only black college football, but college, college football in general. And so, like I said, when you look at the history of the programs, you know, this, these are two programs that the United States and the world should know about. Really looks good in here, don't it? This is how the pros get down. That's what you're striving to be. That's what you're aiming to be. That's it. We're not playing on no Thursday night. We're not playing on no Friday. We're not playing on no Saturday. What day we playing? That's what day the pros play on, right? What you gonna do with this opportunity? Go pee down your legs, you want this exposure, you got exposure, you got cameras, you got ESPN, you got everything you want. You got brand new uniforms, brand new helmets, what else you need brand new? Brand new cleats, what else you need? I don't know how many people coming, it's gonna be on television, that's an opportunity. HBCUs are special. I think with this game, it's an opportunity to really shine a light on that. We've had individuals and you know who have said to us that they remember the original OBC. Then we have individuals who don't remember it, but because they've heard from other people, they're excited about it. So this is a classic that has touched multiple generations. Like, I never got to experience something like this and I actually go through it. Like it's a great feeling. Like, I'm feeling like a pro. Like it's prepping me for the next level. The renaissance of bringing this game back after having a 40-year hiatus. Uh, so impactful. You know, we talk about it all the time. Why not us? You know, again, just the opportunities that this game is going to present. It always has presented opportunities for people of color. They're going to play in an NFL stadium. This is the same stadium that they played the national championship in a year ago. This is it.
We appreciate it. We're thankful. We're happy. We're elated to be here in the Orange Blossom Classic. They really set the bar high. They set the standard, and I'm thankful. And our kids are really happy to be here. Coach Vaughn Wilson from HBCU Game Day. Coach, in 1978, FAMU and Jackson State played in a historic game. It was the semifinal rounds of the FCS playoffs, the last time that two HBCUs have been at that level. Do you feel that now is the time for both of these institutions to rise back to that level? I would hope so. That's the only reason we're here. I don't know what got down in 1978, but I know it's going to get down on Sunday. I do know that these are storied universities. It's unbelievable. They are getting a Power Five experience daily, and that's what they deserve. Why not us? Uh, what, what are some things that you all learned or that you grow from uh, in the spring? This spring, it was, it was good for me to sit out and just watch and see, you know, I'm just getting out of high school. I just played my season, my last fall season in high school. So uh, just seeing the speed of the game and just being able to read the defense and be more confident. And I feel like my growth from the spring to now is tremendous. I want to ask Niles a question. Talk about your team in general. What should fans expect from Jackson State on Sunday? And what's it been like to play for such a legendary coach? It's crazy to be able to um, sit up under Coach Dion. You get to learn so much, and he uh, has the connections just to bring somebody out that you won't ordinarily be able to be around. So it's just, it's, you just got to suck up everything that he, he brings to the table and then everybody that he brings to you. So it's just a learning point every day. And if there's one thing in abundance surrounding Coach Prime, it's the incredible array of connections. From NFL legends to pop culture moguls, and the star showed out in Miami. We have a special treat for you today, Mr. Devin Hester, one of the top 100 players in the league. I know there's a lot of y'all nerves right now. It's a big stage for you, you know what I mean? You gotta look at the bigger picture, man. What other college team you playing today? Y'all been putting the best opportunity, good opportunity to play on the Sunday, man. Everybody watching. We need the dogs to step up. I know y'all here to say, let you hang. Let them hang. Make sure y'all do y'all thing, bro. These guys, when they come in, they don't sugarcoat it. They know how to relate. They know how to reach. They know how to touch, inspire, and encourage, and motivate these young men. It's not always the way they want to be fed, but these guys that we're bringing in, they feed them steak and potatoes, man. Dion gives HBCUs that credibility. It's going to galvanize other athletes, pro athletes, that may have the leadership, have the flair, have the understanding of leading people to come and join him. You got Chad Ochocinco and Dion. It's like brothers, but Chad reveres him. He looks up to Dion, right? So uh, Dion continues to create these blueprints for athletes to follow, and I'm just one of those guys. I got a call down here. Dion said, listen, yeah. I need an AC assistant coach. Yeah. I'm coming in because the last game. I'm calling him though. I'm calling him yeah. He said he called him. What would I be doing? You just told me to get out. You're going to hold the uh, <laughs> ball on the team. <laughs> what, what you mean? That's very important. What, we have you a team on the field? What type of team? Green tea? Team. See what I'm saying? That's kind of stuff right there. Get you on the bench. Jackson State, it's, it's going to be a barbecue on the field. That's right. That's right. I'm telling you, it's going to be a I'm t barbecue sauce is going to be dripping A with. That's right. This is going to be a sauce fest. That's right. Hey, listen, I don't know why you here, what's going on today, but you better be watching this game because it's going down. Bets to be. Better be. And it's just like that. Right? No matter what school you go to, where you came from, all you need is an opportunity. It, it sounds redundant, but he's giving these kids a chance of a lifetime. These kids could have gone anywhere else. Honestly, I'm just honored to be here just to see just the likes these kids can see black kids and see us um, give them the opportunity uh, that they need. Big opportunity in front of us, you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to take advantage of it. You just go stupid today, you feel me? That's it. Sunday, September 5th, game day. A historic day for the Jackson State Tigers. Their first autumn game with Coach Prime, and it's an iconic moment in history that fuels their pregame. Martin Luther King, all of us understand and know who he is and what he represents. He had an iconic speech called, I have a dream. 
right before he got ready to speak. He had planned on saying something else. I get this from the documentary of Aretha Franklin. Because they were friends. They had a tremendous friendship. She looked up at him and said, say it, Martin. Say what you feel, Martin. Say it. What she was really saying, Martin, it's time. I don't know where you come from, what you got going, what's in your heart, what's in your mind, what's in your body, what's in your soul, but darn it, it's time. I do not take any moments for granted, our relationships for granted, because I want you to be men and go out there and change the world. And we have the opportunity. All these cameras are exposure. All these people came to see y'all put on. So right now, what time is it? It's time, it's game time, it's game time. Fellas, I believe in you, man. I believe in you. Go, 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 go. Get on the plate. Get on the plate. Here's Sanders underneath center, and Sanders calls his own number, and this time he's in. It's a touchdown. I mean, that's Shadour Sanders' first touchdown as quarterback of Jackson State. We got to build the wall still. We got to trust each other. Keep building the wall. Yeah. That's how we play the best. We live. Let me ask, stop playing so much. Let's play aggressive. Don't play scared. This is what y'all wanted. Now let's get low and go get it. So Jackson State with a 7-6 lead here before the half. Here's the 48-yard attempt. It is blocked, and Jackson State will go into the half with a one-point lead. Here he goes! Empty the tank. When you, hey, when you come off that field in the second half, you should have nothing left. Keep together. Stay together. If y'all stay together and play together, ain't nobody can deal with y'all, man. I need two and a half from the starters and a minute from the special teams players. Can you give me that? And watch what I do for you. If you give me that, try me. All right? Let's go. This Jackson State defense is amazing. Yeah, coach. They're flying to the football. As long as y'all communicate and talk, they can't deal with you. Y'all doing a heck of a job of getting to the ball. If I'm the quarterback at FAMU, I'm going over there to Willie Simmons, handing my helmet and said, man, forget this. We just couldn't get two yards right here the way our lines are playing. Give me some body language that indicate that we can run the fucking ball. Lean on these motherfuckers. This hard-hitting Jackson State defense ain't nothing to be played with. Let's go. Let's go. It's a ball fucking club. Let's go. Let's get it. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Come on. Great play by Aubrey Miller. Yeah! Jackson State fans urging on the defense on fourth down. Make a stop, dude. Make a stop. What you got, baby? What you got, DT? They ain't got no timeouts. He'll be the last play of the game for FAMU. Here's Junior. And he is back! Back! And the game is over. That's going to do it. We're here, coach. We're here for you, coach. Jackson State wins, coach. Seven to six. Wow. Boy, that was a game. Yeah, good defense. I appreciate yes, you. Oh, good defense. I appreciate you, man. Yes, man. Love you, Love you, brother. Jackson State is the Orange Blossom Classic champion. Team, I appreciate you. You were resilient. Coaches, you coached your butt off. But fans, we thank you that all you travel, traveling mercies, grace be on to you. I love you. I appreciate you. But we expect to be up here. We expect to win trophies. We expect to win, period. God bless. This is the first time they played together. Like, these guys are from everywhere. Right. It's a new, like, 60 guys in there. Yeah. We, we won. Out. Yeah, we won. Let's I'm go. happy. Great dub. Great dub today. How to get it in. There's a dog right here. There's a dog right here. <laughs> no talking. No talking. We play film, you we take it easy way. Wonderful moment for the whole JSU family. It, it means just to see the sea of blue, white, red, and they really believed. Like, I, I saw belief in their eyes, and that was a beautiful moment. On the next episode of Coach Prime. Everybody in America is paying attention 
to the Southern Heritage Classic. We came to get to the next level. We came to be dominant. We came to be without a shadow of a doubt. We came to make everybody believe. Well, let's do that, all right? Because this is a money game. Anybody know what that means? That university pays us to come there to get our bus kicked. This is our biggest game that we've had at Jackson State. We don't suppose to win. We're inferior. We're supposed to buy down to it. And I can't wait till this moment.